How goes it, YouTube? This is Acid Roots. I'm going to review Cobra Starship's final, presumably final album, Nightshades. This came out in some late summer 2011 and was their fourth album, which was a follow-up to their 2009 album, Hot Mess, which had a pretty good success rate about it. Got a top 10 single. And I wanted to cover them just because I do remember these guys cresting throughout the summer of 2011 and a little bit into 2012. There was a lot of similarities with that sort of stuff. Folks like Breathe Carolina, LMFAO, Pitbull, David Guetta, these guys, Cobra Starship. There was just a lot of stuff that I remember from the summer of 2011. And there was one particular song called You Make Me Feel that was a pretty large highlight that got played quite a bit. And I wanted, I kind of wonder what happened to these guys because I remember the song. I thought about it recently and I said, well, what happened to Cobra Starship? Well, apparently they had, they were going to do another album or something like that, but they decided not to. They canceled their band in 2015 and then they dropped like a couple of singles here and there but they haven't really had any desire to put out an album but i definitely remember the fury of like the summer of 2011 just with the kind of edm and dance pop and electronic i feel that so many songs had like party rock anthem this song you make me feel and like songs that David Guetta had and that type of stuff. There's just a lot of that sort of stuff going on. And I feel like this particular album, Nightshades, is like uh, like a hair or two, a shade or two less emphasized as much as like if you're looking for a true party party album, especially from the early 2010s, I would have to say go with uh, LMFAO's Sorry for Party Rocking, but if you're looking for something in that department, but just more from like the, the apex of 2011 doing that, I would definitely recommend that a neighbor in that community would be this album, Nightshades. This is very similar, not quite as hard hitting, not quite as outstanding as Sorry for not quite as outstanding as Sorry for Party Rocking, but definitely a neighbor in it. I definitely think that feel like it's pretty close it just couldn't quite get a number one nor could it get another top 10 or top anything single i mean none of the other two singles even charted within the billboard 100 but there are some pretty solitary club cuts on here and stepping out moments that i kind of feel like maybe not like the richest club in town or the second richest at least back in the early 2010s but definitely like a decent club where you're gonna get like you know, like a $4 beer or something like that. Just something, a nice dance bop, you know, some 7 out of 10, 6 out of 10. Not saying that these women, you would call them 6 out of 10, but just a, a spot where it's not quite as lit as like the major factor points where you would find the hot spots in town. But it's not like if you hear these songs from Nightshades, that means that the women there are going to be 7s out of 10. But it's just kind of, it is just kind of more of like a hand-me-down kind of, not to say that Cobra Starship is like that, but it's just not quite as furious as like this Sorry for Party Rocking, but at least You Make Me Feel is. And there are some records on here, but I just feel like these are kind of B-list club songs in a lot of ways that kind of has that aspect about it. But we'll go ahead and get into it. So, so the first single is You Make Me Feel, and this has a chick on there named Sabi, and she was basically an R&B singer. You can find at least one or two projects by her. She did have kind of her own career. I remember looking her up back in the day because I wondered who that was, but this is pretty instantaneous song. Like If you like songs like Party Rock Anthem and Sexy and I Know It and some of the songs by Pitbull like Give Me Everything and those type records, this is definitely like, this just reeks of 2011. I definitely feel like, especially the summer of 2011, it just had like a lot of aspects about it where this just feels like a summer song, this instantly in the club. I guarantee you probably heard this in the club like at least four or five days out the week back in the summer and back in the early 2010s and stuff. And it continues to be a highlight, but this has kind of become a very backwash highlight just because I just feel like because Cobra Starship did not follow this record up, it kind of gotten, it kind of got forgotten about. So it's just kind of more of like a throwback song nowadays than it was back in 2011 when these guys were red hot. And I think that that's kind of the aspect, but the hook is pretty instantly recognizable. This has like this kind of substandard kind of approachable dance club type beat. And um, 
This really feels like an interchangeable one with just a lot more gloss to it and a lot more instantaneous. I'm actually surprised this song didn't chart higher than just number seven out of 100 on the Billboard 100. So I, I probably could have seen this charting as high as like two or three, maybe not number one, but you know, it's not like this song is bad. I mean, it's definitely an excellent song. I listen to it often. I do like to listen to it often. This is very hooky. They did some great catchy singing on here and it pretty much deserved to hit number one. I definitely think underneath that aspect, that this is a good song. Song. definitely a definitive 2010s EDM and dance pop electronica type song this easy hit they needed at least a couple more songs like this but they just never got it I mean this is I mean th this band Cobra Starship is not a one-hit wonder but they're close to that they're kind of in the neighboring community where they probably were like a two or three hit wonder where I think if you ever hear these guys on radio anymore it's gonna be this song or it's gonna be good girls go bad and you know this i think that's yeah I, I don't know enough i don't know their album hot mess that well i'm eventually going to get to that one but i think this the lead single is good girls go bad which charted the same as this song but the second single is middle finger and this has mac miller on there nice touch definitely like the kind of rockish kind of feel and the verses you know you get mac miller's rapping with like the the gabe supporta I want to say that's how you say his name. Yeah, Gabe Saporta had the singing on the song, and him and Mac Miller have some really good chemistry. It's just a nice kind of ramp you up, easy kind of stadium kind of song. I definitely feel like this one's a little, this one's not so much in a dance club or a nightclub or something like that, but it does kind of have like an outdoorsy kind of feel, a place where you might be at like a campfire or just something like that, maybe a football game, baseball game, something like that. A, kind of stadium type number I definitely kind of feel like that aspect has a nice touch towards it so I definitely would have to say pretty approachable song and I do kind of like the aspect behind it as far as like trying to talk about like I mean it's not nearly as catchy as you make me feel but it is a decent follow-up I don't really think I would be able to hear this song on the radio that much it's kind of like a C plus less B minus less single but I do feel like at least in some settings, if you've been like, if they're like some place where you're going to be at like sports games and you get, you're there for like more than four or five hours, it might be an eventual one. But even then I severely doubt because these guys are so relics at this age from the early 2010s and that's 13 years ago. Now, I just don't know if we would even pick up on like the singles that are not like top 15 or something like that so that's this kind of thing but it is a good song mac Mill credit to mac miller he did a great job on there too and uh the third single is one night and this had less success than middle finger so this is kind of the reason why they didn't reach the popularity i do i'm kind of surprised that one night didn't get more chartability because it's very similar to make you make me feel this not quite as catchy it's the same kind of light dance club lmfao style type music that you make me feel was it just does not have the instantly good hook that you make me feel does it's just not as catchy i mean it does have some of that kind of electro pop feel towards it but yeah it's just it's kind of disappointing that like this single did not chart higher one night because i really feel like it had the same emphasis i think maybe if one night had been the second single it probably would have hit like maybe 50 or 60 on the billboard 100 or something but sometimes you know people really when they like a song they don't give you many chances to follow it up so if it takes you until like the fourth single to get as good a single as the first single it just doesn't work and it's not like i feel like middle finger was bad but i think people were looking for like a sequel that you make me feel that was kind of in the same dance club same night that you're hearing that song and the same emphasis of doing it and I really feel like One Night is that song. It's just not quite as catchy where I feel like You Make Me Feel is probably like the pitch of the night, but One Night is kind of either the energy is kind of starting to wear down or it hasn't quite picked up yet. And I kind of feel like that's the context or it just doesn't have the sheer kind of bite, overall bite that You Make Me Feel does. And I think I blame that also on the fact that Sabi was not on the song. She did a really outstanding hook. But it, it's serviceable. I mean, that's the thing. I do think if I were to hear this song, I'm not going to complain about hearing it. I definitely would say me hearing it at a bar or a dance club or something like that. It's a danceable song. It's a serviceable song. It's a quality song. But it's just, unfortunately, it didn't quite have, like, the overall catchiness. And 
I don't, and, and even then, I don't even like saying that it didn't have the catchiness because I felt like it did, but I can see how it, like, folks didn't quite feel like it had the bite. It just, you, you look at the, the la 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 stuff that Sabi did on You Make Me Feel and that type of stuff, it just felt like, and it's, you know, I don't know, it's just kind of, it's disappointing that that sort of aspect didn't reach that point because I think Cobra Starship really delivered some quality dance club music and that's kind of the thing about it they were a different vein from lmfeo and it felt like they probably would have delivered some more stuff i know they could have gotten more hits which is just too bad but that's kind of the concept so the rest of the album the rest of the album has some highlights on here i'll go ahead and talk about some of these like uh i feel like don't blame the world it's the dj's fault has a similar kind of a if i said that one night was a shade or two less than you make me feel i feel like don't blame the world's the dj's fault is another shade or two less than that where this is not even a single or just these are just interchangeable club songs if you're just looking for like especially if you're just getting like intermittent or kind of intermediate djs and that type of stuff they're just looking for some bops to kind of have to kind of get through the night when you're running out of like a-list singles and stuff that's relevant i definitely feel like some of these are kind of interchangeable to kind of get through the night where they're not quite as furious as you make me feel or the second best song one night but they do have some good quality on here i feel like don't blame the world it's the dj's fault it falls in that loop and then also Schwick is another one that does too. These are just kind of like C list, C minus list dance club songs. But hey, I'll take those. I'm not complaining. I'm not going to say, oh, this is a 70% club song. So fuck that. You know, I'm not going to say fuck a 70% club song. I don't really care. I'll take a 70% club song. And I'll probably take a 50% club song, a 50% quality club song. You know, I would say even... Like, if it's only halfway decent, I'd probably say for the most part, that's just kind of the stuff about it. Now, I know you can say on here that there are some songs that don't make the cut, but I do feel like some of these club songs that they have are pretty, even if they don't have, like, the sheer fury of You Make Me Feel or the singles, I do feel like it's like, hey, you know, these are some extra bops to kind of have just for a stepping out kind of thing, and I, it's just too bad we don't hear more of these. I would at least like to hear some of the singles at, like, some dance clubs and stuff. That'd be pretty dope. Um, but another, some other ones, like apart from those two singles, there's also fucked in love. That kind of reminds me of like a breathe Carolina song has real, this is like the only real electronica one full blown. I mean, the other ones were kind of EDM mixed with electronica, but fucked in love is like the main one that has like the pure electronica type feel towards it. So that's obviously a nice one. And I really like the beat that had one of the best beats on here is just kind of the synthy kind of crunchy kind of David Guetta, but then kind of more an electronic type stuff type feels not as EDM as that one or as, as other stuff. But so some of the songs I didn't connect with, I felt like they were trying to kind of do doo wop kind of um, I felt like they were trying to do deep doo wop EDM. And I really felt like that just didn't connect well with me with. The songs You Belong to Me and Fool Like Me, I kind of felt like they were trying to bring back like kind of doo-wop from like the 50s in like a dance club sense. I don't know where that came from or why that happened, but those both songs didn't connect with me. Any Anything for Love, I didn't really agree with the topic. I mean, I'm not someone who's going to say I'd do anything for love, and uh, I just wasn't really appreciating like the kind of 80s i mean i do like 80s new wave but i don't know anything for love stuck out like a sore thumb in kind of a bad way and fucked in love was kind of stuck out like that just in terms of electronic but the new wave type sound for anything for love was just kind of odd and i just you know wasn't vibing with that one and then disaster boy was kind of this duet kind of club oriented song i think it was just aiming for some some of the stuff that lmfao kind of did or you'd get like these chicks in there that would kind of sing that are not really so much celebrities but just kind of have like some extra singing on there to provide a woman's angle from like the male point of view they were just trying to provide a, a female angle or trying to add a female foil to the male point of view and stuff and i don't know it just it wasn't a, a very effective job of doing that but me liking six out of ten, I'll go ahead and list the six songs if I haven't already. So the six songs I recommend to you out of ten would be Don't Blame the World, It's the DJ's Fault, Fucked in Love, Schwick, Middle Finger, 
one night and you make me feel and that's kind of the concept about it i definitely feel like all the 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 kind of c list b minus list club cuts work as like an extra night if you're just looking for way more club cuts but just they completely lack the bite of you make me feel and somewhat to a lesser degree of one night but it's just hey you're getting club cuts you're getting some stuff to step out to so it's not too big a concept to complain about but if you're just looking for triple a quality and you really want like a true definitive stepping out night it's not quite there but it does have like the haphazard energy attached to it so me liking six out of ten on here you would think it's going to get a solid six out of ten but i'm going to give it a 6.75 i'm going to almost give this well you know actually i'm going to give this album a seven out of ten just because i like the quality on here really had some magical moments but this the concept behind it was it just really could not get another single and it tried but i just feel like the emphasis i don't know how they got the fury of something as good as you make me feel and then could not get they should have totally put like another chick on there they basically like one night is basically just you make me feel without the sobby singer on there the sobby chick that was on that song and for some reason them doing it by themselves just did not have the bite of you make me feel and i think that that's kind of the concept was one night was very close to attempting it but it just could not quite pull off the dynamite catchiness of the first single that's just the whole concept but at least the third single one night attempts it but for some reason it just didn't quite have the bite that's really too bad because I think that had to do with why they just fell off is because they realized that all these years removed that they were probably not going to be able to get another single every three years or four years or something just to have the rest of the album bomb, which is really too bad. But so I give this album a seven. I do like all of the singles. and I do like the stock amount of dance club. I do like the stock amount of dance club cuts on here. So I'm definitely appreciative of that. The social score I will give like a seven also because there are some highlights on here is more than enough considering that this is a short 10 song album I give that credit the fact that it did it so well it's just not in terms of like the sheer I mean there's stuff on here but if you're just looking for pure 10 out of 10 moments it just doesn't have that in very good abundance I feel like LMFAO is probably the better pick to go for in that category but if you're wanting to round out the night once lmfao and pitbull and stuff kind of gets boring this is a good neighbor to go and hit up this kind of happens to be a thing so you know in terms of the future like uh cobra cobra starship broke up they have dropped at least a couple singles but i guess that they may not ever do another album but i hope they do i like what i saw on this project and i'd like to see more from them so yeah